V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement, the effective corrosion protection for ductile iron pipe. Corrosion, it's the bane of all construction, but it's not a problem for ductile iron pipe. Not since the development of a simple, inexpensive, and easy to install way to protect pipe from external corrosion. It's called polyethylene encasement. It's a proven method of corrosion control that's been protecting pipe since it was first installed in an operating system in Lafourche Parish, Louisiana in 1958. It's by far the most widely used and cost-effective method of protecting ductile iron pipe installed in potentially corrosive environments. This video, presented by the Ductile Iron Pipe Research Association, will show you how easy it is to protect ductile iron pipe from corrosion with V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement. This new version of polyethylene encasement consists of three layers of linear, low-density polyethylene film that are co-extruded into one. V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement features an inside surface that's infused with a proprietary blend of an antimicrobial additive and a corrosion inhibitor. This introduces an active component to the successful protection always provided by traditional polyethylene encasement. V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement works like this. At the trench, ductile iron pipe is wrapped with a tube of the V-Bio film, which acts as an unbonded layer preventing direct contact of the pipe with the corrosive soil. The antimicrobial additive mitigates microbiologically influenced corrosion, while the corrosion inhibitor controls galvanic corrosion. Moreover, V-Bio protects against corrosion without consuming the antimicrobial additive or the corrosion inhibitor, meaning its enhanced properties will not wear out. Proper installation is vital to the success of V-Bio enhanced polyethylene encasement. Care taken during installation is as important as the installation method itself. V-Bio follows the same National American Water Works Association standard that applies to traditional polyethylene sleeving. That standard, AWWA C105, includes three installation methods that feature polyethylene tubes and sheets. Because installation is faster and cheaper, most utilities and contractors prefer to use some form of method A. For V-Bio enhanced polyethylene encasement, DIPRA recommends using modified method A, which uses one length of polyethylene tube that extends beyond the joint and overlaps the tube on the following pipeline. Regardless of the method used, it's important to ensure that the V-Bio encasement is tightly wrapped around the pipe providing intimate contact of the encasement to the pipe along its entire length. Failure to do so makes the enhancements in V-Bio polyethylene less able to do their work. Modified method A is the preferred method due to its simplicity, but also because it provides additional advantages during operation. To begin, dig a shallow bell hole in the trench to make it easier to install the V-Bio tube after the pipe is lowered into the trench and the joint is made. Before lowering into the trench, place a sling around the pipe so that it can be lifted off of the ground horizontally in preparation for installation. Cut a section of V-Bio enhanced polyethylene approximately two feet longer than the pipe length that you're preparing to cover. Then slip the V-Bio tube around the pipe, remove all lumps of clay, mud, cinders, or any other material that might have accumulated along the pipe surface. Slip the V-Bio tube onto the pipe, starting at the spigot end, bunching the tube accordion fashion. Next, take the end of the encasement closest to the spigot end of the pipe, fold it over tightly, and tape it completely around the pipe surface, approximately one foot from the end of the pipe. To help make installation easier, continue toward the lifting sling, extending the film, tightly folding it over, and securing it with a length of tape. Lower the pipe into the trench, make up the joint, and pull the overlapping portion of the V-Bio from the previous section onto the new section. This should result in approximately one foot of overlap on top of the film already taped to the length of the pipe being installed. Fold over the overlapping portion of V-Bio from the previous section and tape it down. 
ensuring complete coverage of the pipe surface during backfill. Next, slide the lifting sling to the bell end of the pipe, lifting up slightly to allow extending the V-bio tube to the bell end. Take up the remaining slack around the length of the pipe. Fold the encasement over snugly on top of the pipe and tape down the fold to hold it in place. Before lowering the pipe into the bell hole, there should also be a wrap of tape placed all the way around the V-bio encasement right behind the bell. At this point, there should be sufficient tube remaining to extend beyond the next joint and overlap the film on the next pipe to be installed. Lower the bell end of the pipe into the bell hole by extending the remaining film to accommodate the next length of pipe. Before moving on to the next pipe length, take a minute to check for any damage, rips, or tears in the film. If there's any small rips, tears, or other damage, simply place two small pieces of polyethylene tape over the tear, making an X. If the V-Bio encasement is badly damaged, repair the damaged area by cutting a piece of V-Bio film large enough to cover the entire exposed area and tape it in place. As a final step, carefully backfill the pipe according to the American Water Works Association C600 for backfill procedures. Use backfill material that's free of cinders, rocks, boulders, nails, sticks, or any other objects that might damage the encasement. We've just shown you how simple it is to install V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement under typical dry trench conditions. V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement is not intended to be watertight, but there shouldn't be an opportunity for groundwater to be exchanged or renewed under the wrap. There might be times, however, when pipe needs to be installed in areas with a high water table. This will require a few additional steps. This method can also be useful when installing V-Bio in areas where it's wet and sloppy as a result of rain. Begin as described before under the dry installation method description. As with the dry trench installation method, cut a length of the V-Bio encasement approximately two feet longer than the section of pipe you're installing. Lift the pipe off the ground using a sling. And starting at the spigot end, slide the encasement onto the pipe bunching it up accordion fashion. Again, you want to take the end of the encasement closest to the spigot end, fold it over tightly, and tape it all the way around the pipe approximately one foot from the end of the pipe. Then, every two feet, snugly fold over the encasement and tape it around the entire circumference of the pipe. Making sure that the encasement is tight and in intimate contact with the pipe. For wet conditions, it may be challenging to get the tape to stick to the film, but polyethylene tape will also stick to itself even when wet, so keep that in mind when wrapping pipe in wet conditions. Lower the pipe into the trench and make up the pipe joint, pulling the overlap of the portion of V-Bio from the previous section onto the new section. This should result in approximately one foot of overlap on top of the film already taped to the length of pipe being installed. Fold over the overlapping portion of V-Bio from the previous section and taking advantage of the bell hole, tape it down with a length of tape around the entire circumference of the pipe. Next, slide the lifting sling to the bell end of the pipe, lifting up slightly to allow extending the V-Bio tube to the bell end. Take up the remaining slack around and along the length of the pipe. Fold the encasement over snugly on top of the pipe and apply wraps of tape all the way around the pipe at two foot intervals to the bell end. There should be a wrap of tape covering the V-Bio placed completely around the pipe right behind the bell. At this point, there should be sufficient tube remaining to extend beyond the next joint and overlap the film on the next pipe being installed. Lower the bell end of the pipe into the bell hole while extending the remaining film to accommodate the next length of pipe. As before, it might be helpful to use a small piece of tape to hold the folding encasement before wrapping the tape around the pipe. While modified method A is preferred, the traditional method A is still used. 
The main difference between method A and modified method A is in the overlap at each joint. In method A, there's a double overlap with the extended tube length from one pipe being overlapped with the extended tube length from the previous pipe. Now, the overlap occurs across the joint instead of on the barrel of the pipe. This method, as with others, is facilitated by an ample bell hole that allows working the full circumference of the pipe at the joint without having to lift. It is preferable to overlap the extended tube from the new pipe onto the previously laid pipe first, then to overlap from the previous pipe onto the new. Other than this, method A and modified method A are the same for both dry and wet conditions. When taps need to be made on ductile iron pipe that's encased in V-Bio film, there are several methods available. The preferred method consists of applying two to three wraps of polyethylene tape all the way around the pipe to completely cover the area where the tapping machine will be mounted. After the machine is mounted, the corporation stop is installed directly through the tape and encasement. Using the wraps of tape helps to prevent damage to the encasement from the tapping machine and doesn't require any cuts in the encasement that need to be repaired after the corporation stop is installed. The most important aspect of the installation of polyethylene encasement are to completely cover the pipe and the pertinent surfaces and to remove slack in the film, cover bends, reducers, offsets, and other pipe shape appurtenances in the same manner as the pipe. Wrap odd shape appurtenances such as valves, T's, and crosses with a flat sheet or split length of V-Bio tube by passing the sheet under the tube and over the appurtenance and bringing it together around the body of the pipe. Make seams by bringing the edges of the V-Bio together. Fold it over twice and then tape it down. Overlap the joints just like you would with a normal insulation, then tape the V-Bio securely in place with valve stems and other penetrations. The correct installation of V-Bio enhanced polyethylene encasement is vital to its success. In fact, the quality of installation is much more important than the actual sequence. It's very important to take care during installation not to tear the V-Bio material. So there are several points to remember when you're installing V-Bio encasement on ductile iron pipe. First, it's important that the entire surface area of the pipeline be covered with the V-Bio encasement. It's also important that the film be taken up to remove any slack, pulling the tube snugly against the pipe surface around its full circumference. Although polyethylene encasement doesn't deteriorate once it's installed underground, it is a thermoplastic material. And like most plastics, prolonged exposure to sunlight will eventually cause deterioration of the film. So you don't want to leave the V-Bio film outside for long periods prior to installation. When lifting V-Bio encased pipe with a backhoe, you'll want to use a fabric type sling or suitably tied cable or chain to protect the V-Bio film. Be sure to remove all lumps of clay, mud, cinders, or any other material that might be on the pipe surface before you cover the pipe with V-Bio. During installation, Take care to keep soil or bedding material from becoming trapped between the pipe and V-Bio. Finally, when you install V-Bio encasement in areas where the water table will intrude into the pipe zone, either constantly or intermittently, Dipper recommends that you follow the requirements found in AWWA C105 for wet trench installation. This involves applying wraps of tape at two foot intervals completely around and along the entire length of pipe and thoroughly sealing both ends of the encasement with polyethylene tape at the joint overlap. Polyethylene encasement, since the first commercial application in 1958, has been proven the simplest, easiest, and most cost-effective way to protect ductile iron pipe from corrosive environments. V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement builds upon this proven success and represents a technological advancement in corrosion control for ductile iron pipe. Today, there are hundreds of millions of feet of polyethylene encased ductile iron pipe serving utilities throughout North America and around the world. Since polyethylene encasement was first installed in 1958, 
Test after test has proven that it works at a fraction of the cost of fragile bonded coating systems. It may be hard to believe that something so simple can be so effective, but believe it. If you need to protect ductile iron pipe from corrosive environments, you should use V-Bio Enhanced Polyethylene Encasement.